And now, Understanding the Times with Jan Markell, the program committed to helping you contend for the faith and view current events through the lens of the Bible. Here's Jan Markell. Welcome to the program, everyone. Always so glad you can join me. I would ask you this hour particularly to fasten your seat belts as we head into some issues. They will be expanded on at Understanding the Times 09 coming up here very quickly. Let me just introduce this particular hour by reading something that turned up on the Internet this morning. The website is Jewish World Review for today. Headline, All Hail Obama, From Community Organizer to World Emperor. And the author goes on to say, Up is down, down is up, truth is lie, lie is truth, financial success is bad, stealing cash from those achieving financial success to redistribute is good, we're all equal, but some of us in government are more equal than others. The CIA that saved thousands of American lives must be reinvestigated again. Uninformed Black Panthers confessing to terrorizing Philly voters with billy clubs are let go. Obama is the new God, small g. Pay no attention to the one, capital O, no, pay no attention to the one who has been around forever. Progressive fascists will lead you because you need them, because you protest is proof that the seculars must guide you for your own good. We're going to talk about those things and more this particular hour. I have on the line with me from Indiana one of our conference speakers, Gary Kahn, who just got back from the U.K. He has some interesting insights. As a matter of fact, I think he's kind of nailed the whole issue here, but obviously things have yet weeks and months to play out. Uh, so we're going to uh, pick his brain a little bit. Gary Kahn, welcome back to Understanding the Times. Hi, Jan. It's so good to be with you. Thank you so much for joining me again. Now, you just got back from the U.K., and one of the issues you dealt with was about the rapidly growing interfaith movement. A branch of that is, is what's called Chrislamic movement. But this is growing in the U.S., and you said that in the U.K., one-third of pastors were on the very, they were the very least on the fringe of this due to the naivete. Let's first give a definition to Chrislamic movement, and then tell us about the one-third pastors and what kind of an influence you may have had on them. Well, the Chrislamic movement, that, that term has kind of been coined in the last year or so. Uh, actually, um, here in America, because a, a number of... Um, Pastors have begun holding joint celebrations with mm-hmm. various uh, Islamic leaders of certain Islamic holidays. So the term comes from Christianity and Islam together, Chrislamic. And this is something that I actually believe at some point would begin to happen because if there's going to be a one world system put in place, somehow you have to deal with the religions. And they've got to come together in order to make the political end of things work. And uh, a lot of people have wondered for a long time how would. Uh, professing Christendom be neutralized in mm-hmm. order for this system to come about. One of the things that had to happen is there had to be a sort of coming together of, of Islam and Christianity, and we've been seeing that now for about a year. In Europe, um, it's even further along, and uh, I had some discussions in, in um, Scotland, which is actually where I was uh, speaking with uh, pastors over there, and they're dealing with with this um, same type of, of thing taking place over there, a big move toward interfaithism. Also, by the way, climate change yeah. uh, being another big issue, and that's a whole separate matter, but it seems to be that the same people pushing the interfaith agenda are pushing uh, the climate change agenda, and that's because they're, they're intertwined. Both are, are necessary for this system, this global system, to come together. But here, here in the U.S., um, recently, Brian McLaren yep. announced that he would be celebrating Ramadan uh, along with some Islamic friends. And, um, you know, to me, that just crosses the line. Um, I would say if, if, um, if Brian and others are fasting and praying for right. Islamic friends right. to, mm-hmm. to accept Jesus Christ and are reaching out to them in love in that way, I'd be all for it uh, because I believe we do have to talk to people to be able to reach them for Christ. You can't just shut them out. 
uh, but to be celebrating uh, holy days of other religions with them, it, it just, it's just over the top. And whether uh, some of these pastors are just incredibly naive or whether some of them understand what they are doing, you know, God knows. Um, but I, I think we have to be very mindful of these kinds of developments and, and, and steer clear of it because it seems as if every day – uh, some of our uh, so-called Christian leaders are becoming more and more radical in the wrong direction. And it's actually going at lightning speed. It's, yeah. it's amazing some of the things going on right now that 10 years ago, if you would have said this is taking place, we would have thought never. You know, it, it almost seems surreal. Is this really happening? Uh, but it is. And and then you've got our, our president who has really cozied up to Islam in a major way. Mm -hmm. And um, I just want to share a, a couple of things here that I thought would be of interest um, to listeners. Uh, one of these took place here in our home state of Indiana. Um, President Barack Obama's first judicial nominee, David Hamilton, uh, is a former ACLU attorney who, as a federal trial judge, issued a court ruling that said no to Jesus and yes to Allah. Mm -hmm. In 2005... This former ACLU activist ordered the Speaker of the Indiana House of Representatives to immediately stop so-called sectarian prayers at the opening of the legislative session. Uh, here in Indiana, people had opened up in uh, our, our elected officials had opened up in prayer uh, in the name of Jesus for for decades. This has been a tradition here. Specifically, Hamilton ruled that prayers using Christ's name or title were sectarian and therefore unconstitutional. To make matters worse, in a post-judgment motion for this same case, Hamilton ruled that prayers said to Allah were acceptable. Mm -hmm. So according to Obama's first judicial nominee, prayers to Jesus are unconstitutional, but prayers to Allah are just fine. I mean, it's am amazing that that his first appointment uh, made such a ruling, and that it happened in our own backyard here. And I remember it made uh, made the news uh, a few years ago when this happened. Uh, but that the president of the United States would appoint this guy first, I think, is a signal of of where he's going. And then uh, this was from the Associated Press uh, a few months ago when Obama uh, made his first visit to Muslim nation. Uh, he declared that the United States, and I quote, is not and will never be at war with Islam. He went on to state, quote, we will convey our deep appreciation for the Islamic faith, which has done so much over so many centuries to shape the world for the better, including my own country, end quote. And and so there's more. I have uh, pages of this type of, of thing where he has really positioned himself in a very strong way uh, to – get a favorable response from the Islamic nations for what he is doing in the Middle East. And, of course, when he spoke in Egypt uh, not long ago, um, you know, he got the reception almost of a messiah. 3,000 people were mesmerized by his mm -hmm. statements. And the next day, uh, T-shirts were being sold. Uh, then on the front of them uh, said, uh, Barack Obama, new Tutankhamun of the world. And uh, one of the headlines, actually the major headline of, of Egypt's top newspaper uh, said, Obama, the one we've been waiting for. Right. So uh, these are strong statements, and so you have to ask yourself, what's going on behind the scenes? Why is he being viewed suddenly so favorably by, by the Islamic world? And, and I will address that in more detail at the conference. Right. Now, um, that just kind of goes back to the thing I introduced the program with, um, All Hail Obama, from Community Organizer to World Empire. You and I know that there are hundreds, perhaps even thousands of websites who are calling him uh, the Messiah and other things of a similar vein. 